People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. As you guys know, I really appreciate it and I'm really appreciative of all the support you give me across all the dynamics. You know, you lot always like the video. Please make sure you're doing such. I really love the comments. Make sure you're commenting, of course. Um, yeah, man, I really appreciate it as well. Cheeky plug, but by the time this video comes out, memberships of my channel will be live. So have a butcher's. You know, I've got three different levels, bronze, gold and silver and there's all different incentives and things depending on what you're looking for everything is just aimed at ultimately giving a better package to you guys providing a better service giving you guys better content so yeah there's something for everybody there in terms of football currently you know international break there isn't much to speak about Xhaka played quite well against Spain um, and things like that Sergio Ramos missed two penalties in their last game in Spain's last game you know France beat Portugal you know international breaks a bit a bit of a funky one um, in terms of our lone players or players playing their, their trade away from the club temporarily um, due to internationals, due to fixture schedules, for a bunch of reasons, not too many men are playing. We also have some people that are injured, you know, the only ones that were in action um, off the top of my head before I actually looked down was James Olienko of Southend and obviously Matt Smith. Um, for James Olienko, he got 90 minutes against Southend, you know, a 1-0 victory against Warsaw. Um, he played quite encouraging, as you know. With, with James, one of his strengths are he's a strong ball carrier and he's got a good engine in the middle of the park. You know, at 19 turning 20, you know, he's got to start putting down the groundwork to have a solid season. We all know in his last game for Southend, you know, he'd done a great run and finish. Um, and they're very much in the thick of a relegation battle without even looking at the table. So I'm pretty sure everybody connected with, with Southend is grateful that they got three points. And it was a decent performance from James Olienka. And that's what you want to see, try and put some more consistency together. Um, Harry Clark got 90 minutes for Oldham in their 2-0 victory over Scunthorpe. You know, he barely put a foot wrong. Um, there were some times, you know, he, he had to defend and I think he did very well. He was competent with his passing um, and things like that and you know what can they say three points clean sheet they're doing what they need to do and it's a good experience for Harry Clark because you know in in relation to the center halves on loan in particular <clears throat> The situation is cl is quite cloudy and the dynamic is going to change as you lot already know. There's eight centre-halves on our, on our books at first team level and there's a bunch of them at 23s and they're all at the same stage. So, you know, whether it's Harry Clark, whether it's Ballard, whether it's McGuinness, whether it's Medley, you know, even Swanson, who's not having the best of loan spells in Holland, can play at centre-half as well as either side of the full-back. He's a bit of a utility man. You've got to show everybody that, OK, cool, depending on what, and Mavropanos as well. You've got to say, cool, regardless of what happens at, at first team level, I'm going to integrate you lot, you know, because you must, you, you do kind of think, I do think it's naive to believe any of them are going to, the centre halves in particular are going to get opportunities, but you'd imagine there might be place for one, you know, there might be, I know there's talk of buying a new centre half as well at Arsenal next summer, so who the, who knows, you know, being English, being homegrown, it might be a good stopgap, but what all of these have to do is give themselves the best platform, so if that that is going to happen, great, but if the bad thing happens in which Arsenal say, you know what, we've got a bag of centre halves, we're bringing some someone in we're not going to use you you and you you're free to find a club you've got something to work with you've got experience playing in the football league and whatnot to go with your education at Arsenal and you're still going to learn a lot of lessons you know if Medley makes it here great if he doesn't he's given himself a good platform Medley and Trey Coyle didn't play um this week either um so yeah man, you had Harry Clark and Oli Inkers winning victories for both clean sheet for both as well uh, Matt Smith played against well the, a, a club of our, of another loan spell of one of our players on loan sorry Ilyev he was on the bench and he played no part it was a 3-3 free, free draw between Swindon and Shrewsbury Town and it had everything you know both teams could have collectively defended better for the goals you know some of the goals were bangers but you know there were collective poor, collective poor mistakes that like the sequence leads into goals you know the recovery and the transition weren't good enough from both teams but it was a good team good game for the neutrals I think Matt Smith played um you know I'm tired of saying Matt Smith plays plays well and he plays consistent because every every time I sit here in this loan spell videos you hear me saying this and for me that's a good thing I badly want Matt Smith to make it at Arsenal you know I want him to sneak a place in the first team I think he's and, and anyone that's been watching me for a number of years on YouTube I've said he's one of the most underrated prospects in our academy not to say he's going to go off and play for England and be the next Jack Wilshere and, 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 you know, be our homegrown captain, you know, since Tony Adams and win a league title. I hope he can do that, like with everyone, but I'm not going to place those expectations. What I like from him, you know, is that he's consistent. 
you know forget all technical qualities and all of these things you've got to be consistent once you get into that senior game and he's done that I'm not saying he's played amazing every game but there's been a base level you know his performances at worst haven't dropped between below a five or a six you know and they've always been consistent high end sevens and eights and whatnot you know last game he got an assist this game he got a goal you know it's fantastic work from I could be wrong but it was a good sequence but it looked like Hallam Hope from what I watched it looked like Hallam Hope he's played it it has taken a deflection but his strike is finished it's Matt Smith's goal and you know I think what I liked with him in this game if I had to really really scrutinise his performances, he is very comfortable in possession and he rarely loses it, but I feel sometimes he can be guilty of trying unnecessary, trying an unnecessary hard pass from time to time, it's very sporadic or and, and that can put pressure on your team. I felt he had more balance, I feel he didn't force it as much as he has at previous times, I feel when it was on, he did it, as usual he's competent with his passing, as usual he covers a lot of ground. As usual, he's there for the tackles and the interceptions. He's very much the modern-day midfielder. You know, he's got the Arsenal technical qualities and you can tell he's an Arsenal player. You can tell he's been here since six years of age. He's always scanning around the park. You know, he's always assessing his areas. He's got a lovely passing range. He's comfortable in tight spaces. But he's got that English grit and determination, man. And I don't think that's been coached into him. I don't think... He's learned that at Swindon necessarily. I, from what I've seen of him, I think he's always had that. And being at Swindon, being in League One, being in the professional game, he's just harnessed that and he's gone on. You know, you're not looking at his age anymore. You're not looking at the fact of... It's almost surprising that, obviously, he was training with the first team and he was in and around Arsenal. But prior to this, he didn't have any senior experience and he's taken to League One. And I'd be surprised if Arsenal aren't fielding offers on a permanent basis from potential League One clubs. Championship teams got to be looking at him. I won't go as far to say Premier League but they're keeping an eye you know I think there's parallels but him and him and Conor Gallagher of Chelsea are very similar but very different I think they've both got a good passing range they've both got a, an engine and I'm looking at Matt I'm looking at um, Gallagher as Matt Smith's guide point because I see no reason as to you know if he has a good season here like I said there will be permanent offers but could you send I think he needs to go to the championship and, and as Swansea would be the best place for him you know off the top of my head based on what they do with young players I think he's going to have a good career man I feel you know, obviously, when you're a central midfielder, it's difficult to break through at any team. So if it doesn't happen here, I think he's going to go off and have a decent career and play to a rel relatively decent level. I really got a lot of time for him. Like I said, he scored a good goal, courtesy of a deflected cross. You know, he, he was competent with what he needed to do. His passing range was good. And, you know, it's the same, in a positive way, it's the same old story, same old story. Matt Smith had a good game. And that's what I want to see. You know, like I've been saying, if I was to look at all of the loan spells off the top, top of my head right now I think Matt Smith is doing the best because he's like I said high levels of consistency he's making a difference okay yeah he scored and last week he got an assist but whether he scores assists or just plays well you're remembering the Swindon game and saying yo Matt Smith played well and and, he, and he's getting experience and he's going to return to Arsenal a dramatically better player whether he's going to get an opportunity in the first team who knows you know Torreira and Guendouzi might not be here next year you know El Nene's got two years left on his deal and I know he's playing well but should a new contract come is it another debate are we going to make Sabaos's loan spell permanent granted you would want to see another midfielder come in one that's you know as Shabozlai or Al or any of these guys you know but you know the dynamics could change there could be a spot a spot for Smith to compete in really and truly um, it's down to him because I, I think it's an interesting one what will happen because he's been given a taste of it I don't know him but I'd be amazed if, I, if if he actually wants to go back to playing under 23s football because you've got a taste of first team football, the results meaning something. Even the other day, I'm pretty sure Swindon have a new manager now, so he's had to deal with that. You know, obviously he's a good player, he's playing well, it doesn't change things. But, you know, that could have been a thing where he's playing very well, new manager comes in, new system, he says, Matt Smith, I don't care that you've been playing well, you don't fit what I want. Then he has to fight to get back in the team. And that's what many play. That's what but there's, that could be said for players at first team level at Arsenal. And this is why I'm a fan of loan of loan spells, people, because you learn a lot. I don't think every loan player needs a loan spell. And you can't just say loan. You know, you can't just loan someone out for the sake of it without a plan. But I feel Matt Smith is one of those. And typically because of how we coach our players, we have these technical players, they don't really necessarily do well on loan. Matt Smith has, like I said, the Arsenal coaching and all of these sort of things that Arsene Wenger set with fundamentally the English grit, heart and determination. And I think you marry those both together, he's doing quite well. 
to paint the point, people, before I let you go out of it, Swindon Town, new boss. I'm so sure there's a new boss at Swindon. Exactly. John Sheridan, people. Um, John Sheridan um, has been appointed as first team manager on a contract to the end of the season. So he's going to have to deal with a new manager. Even if we even if we look at League One, you know, forgive me if I'm wrong, Swindon should be in a dog fight, in a dog race. Dog fight, apologies. If I remember correctly, they were fighting relegation sort of thing. Oh, I don't do this. It's not even letting me scroll down. What's going on? Apologies, people. Let me go on my phone because I don't know why Google always does this. It never lets me scroll down. League One table. I apologise, folks. I'll be with you in a sec, which we are, you know. Like, look at it. Looking at looking at it, Swindon sit 20th, people. From 10 games, they've got 10 points. You know, they're in a they're in a dogfight. They're in a dogfight. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a lone player from Arsenal, club legend, everybody's fighting for their futures. And that's that that's way more beneficial than playing the occasional EFL trophy game um, like you'd be doing at 23's level for Arsenal. And to be fair, I wanna see the average age. Swindon FC transfer mark. I wanna see the average age of the squad, because the way they've taken to him and loved him despite his young age, for me is commendable as well. You see you hear the experienced player speaking about him, he's earned their respect. All right, fair play. It's not the oldest of teams. They've got a... Um, apologies, people. You know, I don't want thing to mess around with me. That's probably going to demonetize my thing. But, um, yeah, the average squad age is 25. It's not the oldest, but it's not the youngest, man. You've got some experienced players. You've got Joel Grant there. You know, you've got Hallen Hope. That's been around for a while. Former Everton lad. You've got Zeki Friars, former Spurs and, and Man United man. You know, you've got a couple of players there. You also have a couple of young other loanees as well, but, you know, it's a good little loan spell for him to develop. And if I had to pick someone who's excelling the most, I would say him. He's been the outstanding loan spell, loan, tar loan player, you know. If we're going to look at, if, if the season ends today and we, you know, our loan manager who should, you know, reviewing our practices and, you know, away from the players, what they did right and wrong as to their loan spell, what we could have learnt from loaning out players, you know, Swindon and Matt Smith has been a success and from a player's point of view he's done the best and he's probably the one that's their stock's risen the most really out of all these players but like I said you can just watch any of my long reports so far and they've all been titled Matt Smith and it's hard to ignore the man because he is the outstanding candidate I don't want to sound like I'm just banging on the hype train like I said I don't know for other people I'm not saying he can go on and achieve this that and the other I just know he's a good player he's playing well and you know if he keeps up this mentality this consistency this developing you know who knows where he could go I hope it's at Arsenal you know me I want every player that comes from Hayland to progress if not He's given himself the best platform to succeed in whatever league and whatever country he's going to in the future or, or comes across. On that note, though, you know, it's probably the shortest long, probably not the shortest long report because we've been here for about 10 minutes or 12 minutes or so. But the shortest in terms of players we're actually speaking about. There was only three players, to my knowledge, in action. If there's any more, apologies for, for, for forgetting about them and I'll get round to it. On that note, though, DG.